Hi, and welcome to the Media Twits number 152. I'm Mark Glazer, executive editor of PBS Media Shift. Today we'll be talking about the South by Southwest Interactive Conference once again taking over. Um, and this year, the big breakout hit is Meerkat. It's all about Meerkat, which is live streaming video app where anyone can begin live streaming initially onto Twitter, but then Twitter blocked it and bought its own app, Periscope. So we'll talk about live streaming at South by Southwest, as well as the latest marketing gimmicks, ridiculousness, and some discussions that took place there on this week's podcast. First, a word from our sponsor. Running your own business requires focus, and so does parenting. MediaTwit's podcast sponsor, NextSpace, created a place where parents could give their best quality of attention to both co-working space and childcare space under one roof. Learn more at nextspace.us slash nextkids. Indeed, I am at Next Space in Petrero Hill in San Francisco. My one-year-old son is next door and next kids. Um, so before we get into our discussion, I want to introduce our panel, uh, Andrew Lee from American University, Ari Levy from CNBC, Meg Kramer from Marketplace Tech, Steve Goldblum, Everything But the News, PBS Digital Studios. Jefferson Yen, our producer in LA. So Meerkat has been kind of the breakout hit, although some people say it's also a sign of the coming apocalypse. Um, having live stream, everyone able to live stream at the same time um, could be exciting, could be voyeuristic. I mean, it's, it's a pretty interesting concept. Um, Meg, tell us a little bit about Meerkat and why it was kind of the breakout or the one that we're all talking about now. Yeah, I think that there are a couple of panels that I went to at South By, and I actually, like the first time I came across Meerkat, I saw people going up and asking questions, and they were meerkatting the questions. I don't know if we can use meerkat as a verb now, if it's like that word has become a verb. <laughs> but they would go up and, and hold up their phone and maybe ask a question, and I actually saw someone ask a question about meerkat while they were meerkatting. And, I mean, a couple of things I thought were really interesting about this. I mean, one, this is almost a perfect use of the app because you can, it's it's an event that people are tuned into on Twitter, which is South by Southwest, and the panel is happening in that moment, so you can kind of announce that you're going to go up and use Meerkat, and people can tune in and watch and wait for you to tweet about it. Um, and then it happens and it's over. And I thought it was, you know, an interesting way to get a lot of people at the festival talking about the app because you're sitting in the audience and you see it happen and you get really curious about what's going on. Three so people are watching you on Meerkat right now. <sighs> okay, so you are, are you Meerkatting us right now? Or? I'm Meerkatting, we're up to five uh, now. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you Meerkat us? This is, I, mean, this is, I mean, this is also like a permission thing, right? Everyone's going to be... If you're going to a live show or a concert or something, you're going to just start Meerkatting... I mean, there's gonna they're gonna have to ban it. I'm guessing, right, Ari? I uh, that's yeah. I think we're so far from that point. That, um, but the, the interesting thing is, like, everyone who, yeah, everyone who is meerkatting now is talking about how they're meerkatting on meerkat. Like, it's it's yet to get to the point where you can do a meerkat and talk about anything else. Um, so you know, at some point you have to get there before it actually becomes interesting, or else it's like I mean I don't I don't know if those of you have actually tried to use it, but if you go to the app and you click on any of them, it's like I'm meerkatting my something. Yeah, so anyway, that, that's where we are in this technology. It sounds very early days. <laughs> so uh, Steve, did you want to jump in about meerkat? Yeah, I do want to jump in because I, I spent a little bit of time on the floor. Um, you know, taking a survey, lay of the land of the, all the people at the interactive, and I go walk around. And we're like, I'm pretty low bandwidth um, crew. We have a shooter who's a friend of mine, and we do our everything but the news. And we, you know, film people. But before we start filming people, we say, "Excuse me, would you mind? We're from PBS. We do this show. Are you okay? Here's what we're gonna do." And it's you know, it takes thirty seconds. But I noticed a guy beside me flying through the aisle and just like, so the app that you're here for and what we're talking about, and it was just like they were already doing a live show. 
And I just thought that was such, I mean, we could talk about the invasion of privacy, but I felt like I witnessed this um, atrocious invasion of someone's space. And, uh, I, yeah, it was fascinating to me. I mean, the guy probably plowed through and did 50 interviews in about, you know, 90 seconds. But um, for me, that was an eye-opening because, again, I thought I was uh, like a one-man band type shop, but uh, clearly they've reinvented the term. So you were disrupted right there live at South by Southwest. Your your entire way of doing doing a show is disrupted. I may have been walking around with a beta tape. Yeah, I was totally analog. <laughs> And Andrew, you had some thoughts about the whole kind of ephemeral nature of this. I mean, we've talked about Snapchat before and things that just kind of you record, it's gone, the stories, the discover stories on Snapchat disappear after a certain amount of time. And Meerkat, obviously live streaming, typically a lot of the live streaming apps, YouTube has live streaming. This is not the first live streaming you stream. It's been around forever. But this idea that you're either live streaming or you're not, this just disappears the moment you're done doing it, right? Yeah, you know, I think it's it's kind of interesting because on this podcast we've talked about all kinds of things from Snapchat's normal operation to Snapchat Discover, a kind of magazine you can't link to, you can't save, it goes away after 24 hours. And, then, you know, now as with this third thing, like Meerkat, it's almost like, you know, three points make a plane. We're starting to see a trend here. And I think, as you said, the, the trend is not just ephemerality. Um, as a reaction to the fact that over the last 10 plus years, we now have digital stuff all over the place. It's Googleable. People discover the stuff. It's saved, even though you don't think it's saved. And I think this is a reaction to that. This is a reaction where you can start doing a meerkat and know that by default, it's not saved. You have to go out of your way to save the stuff. And even the folks who created meerkat have said that was a feature, not a bug, in that by being so easy to turn on, and if you tell someone, oh, there's a meerkat, and hopefully people say, oh, okay, it's not being recorded by default, um, more people will try it, that you're more willing to turn it on and experiment with it versus a Ustream and a live stream. And, you know, we've had those technologies for a long time. How is this different? The difference is, by default, you're not saving it. So, you know, in the same vein, we're starting to see people, you know, take more control of the future of their digital content, meaning wipe it by default, leave no trail by default, uh, don't store things forever. And I think that's kind of interesting to see that people are craving that kind of closed-ended experience rather than saying all information wants to be free and everything is kept forever. I think it really is a reaction to that in some ways. Yeah, and so we're just, this is the Media Twits. I'm Mark Glazer. Uh, I have Andrew Lee from American University, R. Levy from CNBC, Meg Kramer from Marketplace Tech, Steve Goldblum from Everything But the News, um, Meg, tell us about what happened with Twitter. Meerkat became really popular. People were basically live streaming their video onto Twitter, and then Twitter decided to just block it, basically, so that you're not able to see the live streams, and they bought their own app that I guess isn't even out yet called Periscope. How did that affect everything? I mean, did that just basically give more attention to Meerkat? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think this is how I heard about it originally, is that... Um, Meerkat kind of blew up on Twitter and became popular and then Twitter shut it down because they had bought this other live streaming app, Periscope, which nobody has tried yet and nobody's really talking about except in connection to Meerkat, which it displaced on Twitter. Right, and so does that, I mean, does it hurt? So, I mean, Meerkat, now you can't see the video on, this happened with Instagram too with Twitter, right? I mean, initially you could just share your Instagram photos on Twitter and then Twitter just blocked it. So, but that obviously didn't hurt Instagram in the end. Right, and if you go and you search the Meerkat hashtag on Twitter, it can send you a link to the video that you can click on and go watch. So I think that... Um, obviously, it would be better for Meerkat if it were integrated with Twitter in that way, but I, it doesn't seem to be slowing it down right now. Yeah. This, this has been an issue with Twitter uh, since the very early days. I mean, Twitter's been very protective of its platform. Uh, it, it hasn't, you, you really haven't seen any big apps blow up on Twitter um, that have sort of been able to maintain that momentum without um, maintaining or, or, or building a following off of Twitter. Yeah, and because they've been so protective about their space, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, it, er, in the early days of Twitter, when you had all these you know, businesses trying to build on Twitter, and Twitter didn't even have a business, um, and so they basically took over the platform, and you know, they wanted to make sure that if anyone was showing ads on Twitter, that they were they were 
tw it was through Twitter system, so you, they they shut off a lot of the third parties, um, and it's made. I mean, you know, there have been any number of companies that tried to get started on Twitter that um, either ended up uh, going away or, or having you know some some sort of massive pivot away from that. Yeah. What about Vine? Was Vine uh, initially started through Twitter? What was the I can't remember now the evolution of Vine. Yeah, I don't even remember pre Vine uh, Vine pre Twitter. Uh, <laughs> and there were a few. There were a few of these like seven to nine second video uh, video sites, and I think I think the first time I had heard of Vine was when Twitter bought them. It's fascinating when you think about that. Just you know, Vine is um, I don't know. We covered this, but there's there's Vine celebrities who have Vine channels that earn six figures in revenue, actually sometimes in millions, and uh, I. I'm amazed by that. I'm also amazed that celebrities like uh, Grumpy Cat is worth, uh, just a fun fact, in the hundreds of millions. I don't know if you knew that, but I found that mind-blowing. <laughs> hundreds of millions. And how Grumpy does Grumpy Cat. Cat spend all that money? That's the real question, right? Yes. I mean, okay, yeah. you get great cat food. What, it's what a frugal cat, actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what else can you get for, for a cat? With a hundred million dollars, that's that's pretty crazy. A manager. A manager, yeah. <laughs> yeah Happy manager. A very big entourage. It's so. interesting to think about Vine as something that Twitter has adopted as being almost like an anti meerkat. Like you record a Vine, and not only can you watch it any time, but it loops forever. And the meerkat is just like one and done. They're completely different if you think about them in that way. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, the real novelty to Miracat is just, I mean, the ability to push a button and be broadcasting. Um, I mean, you know, every technology, every broadcasting technology that we had so far, even those that have been super simple to use, uh, there's been some sort of hurdle be from the point, you know, where you have the device where you're actually um, broadcasting live. Uh, and the ability to just literally push the button and it happens, and then you have the built-in audience if you, you know, whatever your Twitter following is, is the audience. Uh, that, that's the real novelty to, in, in my mind. And what about for broadcasters? I mean, what does that mean for a journalist who can just broadcast live? I mean, we've seen Vice do that in war zones. I mean, this could be just everyone broadcasting live from everywhere, right? There will be some bandwidth issues, but yeah, I mean, the, the newspapers trying that. <laughs> so, this interview with the folks at the Houston Chronicle on trying that. One of the big problems, though, is that uh, Meerkat is vertical video only at this point, so it doesn't really integrate well with what um, traditional videographers and storytellers want. Also, there's a huge lag time from what I know. I think something on the order of 30 seconds for what you start filming and what gets buffered and gets sent out to the world. So I think the buffering could be a real problem there. But I think it, it's a start of something interesting. You know, I, I think the other thing that's kind of interesting about Meerkat is the on-screen chat, whereas you have other video streaming solutions that, you know, you're pretty much in video mode only. But by being vertical on Meerkat, you're actually seeing all these icons of people watching you. You can actually inter interact with them and type into them. So, you know, right now on this little thing, it's a coffee cup with a cell phone on it. I'm actually Meerkatting this, and I'm seeing you know, six people watching our thing right now, and I can see what they're up to, and they're saying stuff, stuff to us. So it's kind of interesting as a twist on that, that pure streaming model. So between the five of us, we should have, like, 30 people watching. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, it reminded me immediately of the Dave Eggers book, The Circle, where, um, you know, politicians would go transparent, I think they would call it in that book, and they'd have to walk around with these, like, meerkat-esque cameras. I wonder if this is going to be something that we'll see on police... Uh, on, uh, on on police now actually as they have to as they move into live streaming. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating stuff. I'm curious about. I, I know there must have been some other things going on at, at South by Southwest <laughs> outside of Meerkat. Um, I mean, Meg, was there some technologies that stood out stood out for you, or things that you were impressed with? I was really interested in all of the conversations happening around artificial intelligence. Um, you know, we had this AI protest. There was uh, the Which premier... Which is a fake protest, right? <laughs> right, exactly. The <laughs> premiere of the... The North American premiere of the movie Ex Machina and their sort of Tinder campaign around it where they put one of the characters from the movie who's actually an, an artificially yeah. intelligent humanoid robot on Tinder and tricked people into chatting with her. And I think that this is this is one of the things that I think is interesting about South By is that it's not really a place where people go to launch new technologies anymore, but it is a place where people go to have conversations about 
tech culture and what's happening in the world of technology. And it creates kind of a space for that that doesn't exist outside the conference. Yeah. At Did least you... not in a not in a concentrated way. Right. That's true. Ari, what did, what did you think about some of the discussions that were there in conversation? I mean, was it more about culture than it was actual apps or actual businesses? Yeah, I mean, everyone has their own South By. It's not, like, there really isn't a central theme. And so sort of whatever universe you're in, um, that's going to feel like the South By that is happening. But, you know, then you, <clears throat> if you walk across town, you know, so you go west side to east side, um, the experience that you have is completely different. And so, you know, you go from, like, um, a party, you know, a venture capital party um, near the convention center, and you go east um, under the bridge, and, you know, you're at a barbecue for some local startup. Um, the conversation is, is very different. Um, so, I, like, I mean, I was trying to sort of get through to um, you know, my editors um, before I went that, like, it, this is not like going to CES where uh, you know that you're going to cover virtual reality, you're going to cover big TVs, you're going to cover, um, you know, connected devices. There's not, like, you're going to kind of cover whatever seems cool at the moment that, you know, wherever you are. Um, that may or may not be interesting to anyone outside of Austin, um, but it's a, it's a very... Um, I don't, it's a very unique experience in that regard. It's definitely not like any other conference you go to. Yeah, and you you had a really interesting post about just the best marketing gimmicks that people were trying, which is really funny. I mean, t tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, well, so I, I was basically, you know, my, my goal that day was just to go on, you know, basically a listening tour. And so I was going to, um, you know, start off at, at one spot and ask uh, a couple folks where where I should go from there. And, um, and um so I was told Rainy Street, and I had been to Austin once um, for South by, um, and so you know someone said just go to Rainy Street and you, you'll never leave. Like you'll get all of the color you need. Uh, but I was committed to not just sticking it on Rainy Street. So on the way there um, from the convention center, I came across the GE Barbecue Research Center, um, which had gotten some publicity ahead of time. So I definitely did not discover this. Um, but um, you know GE was effectively trying to create the perfect barbecue for Texas, uh, as ironic as that may be. Um, and, you know, it's interesting. Like, it's it's a fun little tour through it as you, you taste, like, um, what it's like to have kind of chemically smoked barbecue. And they had, um, they had uh, uh, basically every station there um, was, was, like, chemically induced. But I'm not describing this well at all. But, you know, it's G GE trying to get some publicity for what they can do with food. And you think, like, if you're GE trying to make a splash at South by... Like what the hell are you going to do? You're GE. You're not, you know, uh, you're not, you're not Google or you're not Uber. Um, and so, you know, they definitely had to do something to get people interested. And um, you know, there, there was a constant line uh, around the corner, if that makes sense. There. Um, and then, so then from there, I went over to Rainy Street, and along Rainy, you just have um, a bunch of um, companies that you've never heard of that have rented out houses or bars uh, or restaurants for a few hours or a day, um, and, you know, it's what can they do on the outside of that edifice to get people to come in, um, and so the interesting thing is, like, they're trying to get people to pay attention to it, but then you actually go up to try and get in, but it's an invite-only party, and you're not a, you're not on the invite list, so, like, you have to do things <laughs> to get in. Um, not, don't take that the wrong way. Um, but, um, um, yeah, it's, so like, it's like they're getting attention, but then they it's, it's like they want you to know about them, but not yeah, actually but, be there at their yeah, party, right? Yeah, they don't want you to drink their beer. Um, <laughs> and um, But, like, you can... So, I mean, I, I spent a, a full day just getting anecdotes for the story on the weird marketing gimmicks. And, you know, I mean, I... I to say I didn't even scratch the surface of what was there is an understatement. I mean, it was, you know... Um, I, I would have spent. I would. It would have required several more days to actually get all of the great anecdotes. Um, but it was just sort of like you know what I wanted to do was provide a slice of also a slice of South by for people who weren't there. Yeah, I mean, Steve. Steve, is it true that it's just hard to get your head around it? I mean, you're trying to do videos of things. I mean, there could be a million videos of everything, right? I know. I feel like we've covered it now. This is the, we've we always try to comment on South by me and my partner and. Um, I feel like there's two types of nice. There's the East Austin nice, where people will tell you where to get the good coffee or the barbecue, give you a tip on when to line up. And then there's the brand activation nice, 
where you're going down 4th Street near the convention center, and somebody goes, hello, and you go, hello, and they go, do you want to come in and have a free breakfast on Yahoo? All you have to do is tweet or hashtag Yahoo breakfast, eggs, waffles, or something, and it's like, you know, it's a, you're at a crossroads, because on the one hand, it's just human nature. You want the buffet, you want the eggs, you want the waffles, you want the watch, you want the shirt and the swag, but you've got to give up every shred of uh, social media equity that you've built up it's like pass. It's like yeah. Take all my family and my friends. Just take them. Do whatever you want with them. And I want it because I need those waffles. So it's an odd thing when you really ask yourself what you're doing. And brand activation is just so prevalent. It's absolutely everywhere. Over, especially at interactive. Maybe less so at music. But you know, hey, we're. I was just at the Dell, Intel, and Spotify house. So you know, what do I know? Yeah. So they're basically trying to get you to market for them. So it's like, we'll give you some waffles in exchange for you marketing our product. A brand ambassador. You're a brand ambassador, okay. <laughs> Citizen brand ambassador. Yeah. So, a Andrew, what was your take on that? I mean, how, if you're a journalist assigned to cover South by Southwest, I mean, what, what the hell do you do? I mean, it feels like <laughs> everything is either covered or there's too much to cover. I mean, it, it just seems like it's, it's difficult. And there's no doubt there's too much to cover. Even if you stayed there every single day, I think you'd, if you have a fear of missing out, you would go nuts there because you will be missing out on a lot of interesting stuff. So, uh, you know, it's almost become like the de facto World's Fair at this point if you think about um, how international it is now. And the strange thing is that Austin is not a city that is meant for that many people at one time from so many different places commuting there. So uh, Brazil had a huge presence there. I think in the premier spot there next to Samsung and everything was a huge Brazilian presence, and I ran into so many Brazilians that I'd never run into before, and they said that for some reason, they even said to themselves that it took, it caught fire this year in terms of creatives and tech people from Brazil going to South by Southwest. Um, the, I, I went to something that's kind of cool, and, and it kind of shows how much it is the kind of like a World's Fair. So National Geographic was launching a new series, so they actually did a take on the Escape the Room, you know, kind of a performance art that was debuted, I think, in New York City, and then a 20-minute experience for folks to escape the cold. So they locked you into this inflatable cold dome with about five other people, and you had to go solve all these clues how to get out. And part of this, unlike the normal escape the room art, you had to use social media in some way. So at some point, you had to use your mobile phone to tweet to some um, username to get the solution on how to find the key to open the door to get you out of the cold room. So it was it's interesting. I mean, what's what's really cool about it you know, is, is that not all these technologies are debuted at South by Southwest, but it is really cool to see just no one bat an eye at geeking out and trying things and experimenting with stuff. And there is that comfort level of just no one is ever going to think you're a weirdo for trying these weird things. Um, but I think what has really made it palatable in recent years is the advent of Uber. I mean, th this this venue that you have now is so spread out. I don't know how you could have this without the on-demand Uberifying of travel in Austin where you can get a cab or a car in two minutes. Otherwise, you'd be spending half your day walking and, and trying to find some kind of transport. Or pedicabs or something, too. I yeah, think. and pedicabs were part of the Uber network this for this conference, yeah. right? So you could literally hail a pedicab with, your, with Uber. Ah, I think Meg did. Meg, you mentioned that, too, right? Yeah, you can do that, yeah. Uh, the best shot, by the way, that I saw at the festival was of three cabs, two petty cabs, and then somebody uh, waiting for an Uber. <laughs> I swear. And I heard the person say they didn't want to cancel. I said, I've called the Uber. So, And there were just all these other you know, vehicles literally ready to, for liftoff. That was the best. That was the best imagery I saw. They want to know who's going to be driving them. They need to know. The pedi pedicabs are the most expensive way to get around. Yeah, well, well pedicabs are like a limousine. True. The slowest and most expensive way to get around. Yeah. All right, well, great discussion. I appreciate everyone joining us. Uh, Andrew Lee from American University, Ari Levy from CNBC, Meg Kramer at Marketplace, Steve Goldblum, Everything But the News, PBS Digital Studios, and Jefferson. Yen, our producer. I want to thank our sponsor, Next Space and Next Kids. You can learn more about their program at nextspace.us slash nextkids. You can catch the media twits every Friday at PBS Media Shift at pbs.org slash media shift, or you can catch all the meerkats from all of our guests on Meerkat app.